but were easily cut down as they ran off the track and into the swamp. The Romans fought in the rain, they fought in the sunshine, but no one can fight in the peat bog. Even allowing for the element of surprise, why were the heavily armed Romans unable to put up more of a struggle against their lightly armed attackers? The answer may have been that Arminius equipped a section of his army with Roman weapons. No Germanic weapons were ever found on this battle site. Defeat was unthinkable for Varus. He was trapped in the depths of the forest with three of the emperor's treasured legions. Augustus' dream of ever-expanding frontiers, of empire without end, had turned into a bloody nightmare. We now return to decisive battles, the Battle of Torteberg Forest. It is 9 AD. A Roman army of 18,000 men is fighting for survival in the German forest. At stake, the eastward expansion of the empire. Varus tried to regroup on the second day, but couldn't communicate with the other section of his army. Arminius had succeeded in splitting the Roman column in two. This meant that one half of the army would not know whether the other half had survived. Sections of the Roman cavalry, unable to maneuver in the forest, abandoned the infantry and made a dash back to the Rhine. The survivors managed to hang on through another night. By the morning of the third day, they were exhausted and completely pinned down. Varus and his officers knew that defeat was inevitable, but they also knew that capture meant a horrible death. You would not have wanted to be a senior centurion who fell into the hands of the Germans. A number of the most senior Romans are wise enough to realize that they are going to have a terrible fate at the enemy's hands. They choose suicide. For Varus, the humiliation of defeat must have been made ten times worse for having been duped and betrayed by Arminius. Varus was a man who I, I believe would have never even given thought to surrender. I, the honorable thing for a man for, in his position to do was to commit suicide. And I mean, what more precedent does he need than his own father had committed suicide? His grandfather had committed suicide. And do, does one realistically expect that this is a guy who's going to raise the white flag, so to speak, and say, hi, here I am, uh, take me hostage? After the death of Varus, the resistance of what remained of his three legions collapsed. The slaughter that followed horrified Rome. Corpses were cut into pieces and hundreds of heads and hands nailed to the trees. Those taken prisoner were dragged to ponds deep in the forest where their throats were cut and their bodies were thrown in the water as a sacrifice to the forest gods. Afterwards, for years, the forest floor was white with bones. The Germans cut off Varus's head and sent it back to Rome. That's how they learned that their army had been defeated, is when not rumor, but Varus's head arrived. Three entire legions, almost 18,000 men, were dead. Augustus never recovered from the news. Nightmares. Augustus suffers nightmares with this. He dismissed his German personal bodyguard. He refused to have a haircut or shave his beard. Augustus just could not ever quite sleep at night afterwards and would awake and in the middle of the night yelling, Varus, Varus, give me back my legions. The Romans never raised those three legions again. They went from 28 legions down to 25 legions, and they didn't expand that army for almost two centuries. But it wasn't just the loss of Augustus' beloved legions. Was the frontier safe? Would the barbarians now stream in to the empire? The initial response is panic. This is a very good army that's been pulled apart, and it also represents uh, about 10% of Rome's military manpower. So
So uh, one of the questions is, where are the enemy going to stop? Conscription was introduced, but when it became clear the Germans were not going to cross the Rhine, the mood turned from fear to humiliation. Six years later, another army was sent across the Rhine. They discovered the bones of their slaughtered comrades and recovered the eagle standards of the lost legions. But the tribes remained undefeated. Dreams of expansion were over. The empire stopped at the Rhine. When we look at a number of the other defeats in Roman history, what's interesting with this one is it so very explicitly actually stops a pattern of expansion in one area. And that has very long-lasting consequences. It is also something that actually has a direct impact on the very shape of the Roman Empire. Because of Torteberg Forest, the Rhineland became a border between cultures, between those speaking Romance languages like French and Italian, which derive from Latin, and those speaking Germanic languages. Arminius had won a great victory, but he was unable to weld the various German tribes to one single force. Ten years later, he was murdered by some of his own followers. But he became a symbol of German national resistance. Later generations would drop his Latin name and call him Hermann the German. In 14 AD, Augustus died. In his will, he warned his successor not to make war east of the Rhine. The Romans had suffered a tremendous blow to their confidence. They'd been outwitted by barbarians. The whitened bones of Varus and his soldiers marked the boundary of the Roman Empire. Special Ops! Who? You will advance to the right flank in a couch! Infantry! The left! I'll set up base camp on the Lazy Boy and take command of the remote control. The new series that lets you be the general. Command Decisions, next on the History Channel.